Welcome back my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube, my name is NimbleThor and today we're gonna have a look at the most interesting games I played this week which includes one of the best casual off-road racing games I've played in a long time on mobile. Now as you may have noticed from the community tab I'm also planning a video about the best mobile MMORPGs for next week by the way so if you've got any recommendations for that do let me know down in the comment section below this video. So the first game in this week's quest of finding the very best that mobile gaming has to offer also has one of the weirdest origin stories. Because Asphalt Extreme originally released as an awesome single and multiplayer rally racing game published by Gameloft all the way back in 2013. Unfortunately though, it was full of expensive in-app purchases and around mid-2021, Gameloft entirely discontinued the game, which meant it couldn't be downloaded anymore. But then, just a few months ago, Netflix, of all companies, decided to acquire the rights to the game, removed all monetization entirely, and then re-released it on both Android and iOS, which leads us to today, where anyone who already has Netflix can play it again. So the core gameplay in this game has us race through a ton of levels and game modes, including a career, real-time online multiplayer, and time-limited events, while then gradually unlocking and leveling up 38 vehicles ranging from monster trucks to boogies and pickups. But where it gets interesting though is that instead of traditional linear racing tracks, each level features multiple paths, including lots of jumps, ramps, and opportunities to crash the opponents, making the gameplay hectically fun. The controls work well and feature a lot of customization options, including tilt or unscrew screen buttons and some Bluetooth controllers even support. And I gotta say the graphics have held up surprisingly well for a game of this age with plenty of awesome slow-mo effects and several camera view settings offering a rather polished experience. The biggest downside here is that this is a game that is exclusive to Netflix so if you don't already have Netflix you won't be able to play it. The game requires online access, takes up 1.4 gb of space and although progression is a bit slow the fast-paced gameplay and almost endless amount of content easily compensates for that making the game an easy recommendation for for anyone who enjoys off-road racers. Next up though is a game for everyone who loves wacky RPG games because Towel Fight 2 is a fun twin stick shooter with a huge dungeon crawling map full of monsters and 10 unique bosses that we must blow up by literally shooting wacky animals out of our face. But apart from this humorous universe of the game, what truly sets it apart from other twin stick shooters is that we don't acquire new weapons as we progress. Instead, we unlock and customize a clip of six animal bullets that we constantly cycle through as we shoot, such as goats that fling exploding tin cans when they die, owls that grab enemies and smash them against stuff, and much more like that. And meanwhile, gold is used to buy new projectiles, keys that open locks, and other useful upgrades. We're free to explore the dungeon in this game as we see fit, but each room features a bunch of random enemies that we must defeat before we can move on to the next rooms, and if we die, we restart from the first room and lose half of our gold. And from the art style to the character dialogues, this game just oozes of that great sense of humor that butterscotch shenanigans have become known for. What I did find a bit strange though is that we can only shoot up, down, left and right, which means we have to move our character around much more than in traditional twin stick shooters. And I do know that this tricky and somewhat unconventional control setup is deliberately implemented to make the game more challenging, but I just can't help but feel that it will negatively impact the overall experience for some players. Towel Fight 2 is a free game that monetizes through a single $2.99 in-app purchase to reduce the resurrection cost by 50%, enable cloud save and receive a coin doubler. It can be played offline, takes up 101 megabyte of space and its simple monetization great humor and overall polished gameplay experience makes it a must try for any fan of twin stick shooters. Another great game that released a lot more recently is Sparklight and I think it's worth talking about because it's a polished action adventure RPG with light roguelike elements that is actually ported from PC by the Dead Cells publisher Playdigious. Now the core gameplay loop here has us explore a world that is split into dungeon like sections that get randomly generated on each playthrough and the objective is to fight monsters to earn Sparklight which is a currency used to buy new weapons, gadgets and upgrades. And I gotta say, for anyone who's just getting into the game, it is initially rather challenging, but after enough upgrades, we'll eventually discover and be able to defeat the boss and then move on to the next areas. Where the roguelite elements come into play is that when we die, we have to start from scratch again, but we do actually also progress in between playthroughs by unlocking new weapons, including bows and even remote controlled bomb ships, and by equipping a combination of gadget upgrades that increase our health, reveal important locations on the world map, and much more like that. The pixel art style is cute and polished with neat animations and and a fairly interesting world and characters, and this mobile port features the exact same gameplay as the PC counterpart and includes both cloud save and achievements as well. When it comes to the touch controls, they work decently well, but despite supposedly having full controller support, several users are reporting that their controllers just don't work with this game, so just do be aware of that. Sparklight is a $6.99 US dollar premium game on iOS, whereas it is free to try until the first boss has been defeated on Android, after which the full game unlocks through the same single $6.99 
in-app purchase. The game can be played offline, takes up 188 megabytes of space, and it provides a great experience with hours of fun gameplay perfect for fans of action-adventure games. My favorite game of the week has got to be Asphalt Extreme, just because I never really got to experience it back in the day when it was published by Gameloft, but I'm really enjoying it now as a completely free-to-play game. Although, all three games this week honestly just great if you haven't played them before. But do you agree with my take on these games, and what is your personal favorite? Let's discuss that down below, and then, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.